Hello, my name is Lydia Yuknovich, and thanks to the wonderful mammals at Boulder Bookstore, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about my paperback newly released book, Verge, a collection of short stories, which I like to call the Little Wolf Rainbow Book. Um, the short story collection is called Verge partly because all of the stories in it involve a kind of um, in-betweenness of existence, in-betweenness of characters, people on the verge in a variety of ways, either on the verge of making weird decisions or on the verge of something epic about to happen to them, or people living not quite in the mainstream, but to the side of something or about to fall over an edge of something. And I'm interested in telling those stories because for me, they carry the as big a narrative weight as, as any giant stories about famous people or epic heroic people. And so for as long as I'm writing stories, I'm gonna keep telling <laughs> the beautiful narrative weight of characters who live in a liminal place or periphery of the big events and the big heroisms. I've written novels and I've written short fictions and I've written essays and I've written hybrids and um, people ask me why short stories instead of novels and for me it's not as big a difference as you might think. I always write in fragments and then I ask myself questions about form and content and so some fragments will arrange themselves as beautiful blooms and a shape that's sort of short and some fragments are loud and noisy and resist being pinned down and they keep going and and demand that I follow them and those fragments become novels, longer works. And so my short stories and my longer works are always speaking to each other formally in a, in a kind of grand cacophony. <laughs> um, my process for writing novels, nonfiction and short stories um, really isn't very distinctive in terms of the separation between those forms. What drives me are formal questions or formal puzzles or formal challenges on the page. Like what if you took the ending out? How would you make a story? Or what if you took the main action out or the main character? Would it still be a story? And how could you tell a story with pieces or retina flashes or images? Um, and so sitting down to actually write them I'm the same me with the same weirdness around me and the same talismans in front of me. And I just sort of enter into that beautiful imaginary world trance state where you're struggling with or puzzling on form and content. And I, I follow it. I chase them. Um, I've been asked how much of my own experiences make their way into my fiction. Uh, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> All of my experiences make their way into the stories I write. And in the case of uh, these short stories, Verge, uh, you'll find a stuffed monkey that has, is missing a hand. I actually own a stuffed monkey that's missing a hand. There's a character with an obsession with Jane Goodall. I've had a lifelong obsession with Jane Goodall, also with the rhesus monkeys that were used in the Russian space program. Uh, you'll find characters who live in Florida or who are working in the Alaska canneries or uh, people who enter and exit water a lot. All of those things have been part of my life. And I also would say that every story in this book, Verge, is an homage to either someone I know deeply and personally who has entered and sometimes exited my life or someone who I read about or had some contact with that um, I feel an allegiance to. I would like to honor their experience and pay homage to uh, their existence in ways that keep their story alive. 
the order of the stories in the book wasn't entirely my decision. Um, so the great people at Riverhead Books helped me to constellate, I would call it, or curate the order and sequencing of the stories, particularly Cal Morgan, who I've worked with for several years now. I'm very good at collaborating with um, other people who help me curate or sequence things, probably because I was a competitive athlete. I was a swimmer for 20 years. So when somebody moves in to help steer me or uh, curate or suggest uh, possibilities or challenges, I respond really well. I, I want to race and I want to <laughs> swim farther and faster. And, and so that kind of collaboration just makes me giddy. I love it. Also, I'm not a prima donna artist. I could care less the importance of the author. I just want to um, play inside language and story making. Um, the hardest story to write in the book is based on a friend of mine who wasn't long for this world and ended up exiting on his own terms. And it was hard to write because uh, I love him so much and he's gone. And um, I wanted the story to highlight the struggle he faced between having the world's most amazing, astonishing imagination and having to live a life where uh, not very many people around you understood it, like a failure of translation or a failure of the bridge between imagination and audience. Uh, and so that story ended up being about a janitor in um, a planetarium. And that story is called Cosmos. And so the reasons for difficulty had to do with my life and my friendship and this person I lost who I loved so very much. Um, I've been not reading as much during the pandemic as I've been obsessively, even more obsessively than usual, watching movies and binging on series, which I think a lot of people are doing right now. And this series that just slayed me is um, I May Destroy You, and I have watched it over and over again, and I love it to death, and I love Michaela with all of my creative soul. And I think Michaela should have received all the Golden Globes and any awards that are possible to win. Also, just give them a country. <laughs> and um, I'm going to read just a, a tiny, tiny passage from this short story collection, Verge. It's from the first story in the book called The Pull. In the water, the swimmer feels weightless. The blue of the pool fills her ears and holds her body and shuts out the world. Swimming is her favorite state of being. On land, the swimmer can barely breathe. She was not yet two, the story goes, when she first gravitated toward water. One afternoon, during a family trip to the Mediterranean Sea, she wandered off the edge of a dock before anyone could notice, dropping like a rock into the ocean. Her sister, five years older, dove in after her, pulling her back to the surface, and when she emerged, she was smiling, not drowning. She remembers none of this, but it's a vivid story her family tells. And with that, I, I hope to have presented you with a watery portal in which to enter this short story book, Verge, on its paperback drop birthday. <laughs> And lastly, some more sugar and love to Boulder Bookstore, whose people and shelves give me such joy. Buy independent books. Love, Lydia.